G'day everyone. You know, just about every watch brand out there has a name. Some are familiar, some are iconic, some are just abbreviations, and some are, well, bizarre. But in this case, I didn't let a naming convention get in the way of a good watch purchase. So let's decipher this enigma and look at the Mysterious Code Pilot, or MC as I'll call it. Mysterious Code. So here's a specs list with all the details, including physical dimensions, weight, water resistance, crystal, movement, and price. The current price on AliExpress is a bit over 70 Australian dollars, but you can get these for less with discounts or during a sale. And if you're already familiar with Flieger watches, then this B-type won't really surprise you. In true Flieger style, the diameter of the dial is encircled by a track with rectangular indices at every minute marker, with longer markers at every 5 minute interval, and a thicker one at the cardinal points. Moving further in, you have Arabic numerals at every 5 minute interval, with the exception of that familiar triangle marker at the 12 position. Beneath these, you have another circular track with Arabic numerals indicating the hours, with a tiny circular point at each hour to further help with orientation. And that's it. No brands, no complications, and no other text. It's a clean slate as far as watches go, and I really appreciate its purity and the fact that there's nothing to distract you from reading an already busy dial. Oh, there is one other thing, but I'll mention it later. Indicating the time of these sword-shaped skeletonized hands, they help to give the reader a bit more viewing pleasure of the overall dial, and their length is perfect, with the hour and minute hands accurately pointing at their relevant indices. Juttering around that dial is a black solid seconds hand that appears arrow-shaped with its triangular pointer and a counterweight that looks reminiscent of a knock, another tiny detail I appreciate. Powering the MC is a Seiko BH31 MechaQuartz movement, ticking away at 4 beats a second. So it offers the best of both worlds, the sweeping romantic motion of an automatic, and the accuracy and endurance of quartz power. Considering that a regular quartz movement would usually be found in a watch at this price point, the inclusion of the VH31 movement is very welcome. Looking at the rest of the watch, there's a lot of nice surprises. For instance, shielding the dial is a slightly domed sapphire crystal, so it won't be getting scratched anytime soon. According to the Wahin Factory Store's AliExpress page, the watch case is also made from titanium, which is more durable, rust resistant and lighter than stainless steel. And this seems to be reflected in case weight being only 35 grams, making it very light and comfortable on the wrist. The case sides and bezel have a very nice polish to them, giving the watch a more high-end look that beguiles its two-digit price tag but I'll mention that again later. The case dimensions also help to make this wearable for nearly every watch enthusiast. The lug to lug is a tad longer, but this also seems to be a common theme with Liga watches. The other impressive element is its water resistance at 50 meters. Okay, that doesn't sound impressive, so I should elaborate. The MC also includes a signed screw down crown, not a push pull configuration, which threads and adjusts very nicely, might I add. And the case back is screw down as well, so while I would suggest that you only use this watch for water activities that don't go beyond pool swimming, it's the inclusion of these features that give me a lot more confidence with its water submersion capabilities. And the case back includes a nice looking, laser etched, twin engine World War II aircraft with the watch's branding and other specifications running around the logo. Unlike the case itself, the case back has a more brushed titanium look to it. And the one more thing I wanted to mention about the dial is the fact that it's fully loomed. Hit it with a torch or sunlight and watch it glow. It's super bright for the first 10 minutes, but will lose that initial brightness and go pretty dull pretty quick. I'd say at around 40 minutes you lose hand legibility, but to be honest, this is perfectly acceptable for a watch in the field slash fleeker category. And although the legibility will go, the dial itself still emits a faint glow even after a couple of hours. Which leads me to my mixed feelings about the MC, and I'm throwing in a small doubt for measure 2. I used the word juddering earlier to describe that seconds hand movement. If you just glance at it, you don't think much about it, but when you look at it for a while, that stutter in the movement just looks strange. Maybe it's just me trying to adjust to a different movement type, and it still does its job well, but those unfamiliar with this movement may take time, like me, to adjust to looking at that erratic sweep. The supply black NATO strap is just okay. I do like the brush metal buckle and keepers to give it a more rugged look and the added length is great for those with thicker wrists. And if it's too long, you can either fold the strap back in, or use a lighter and scissors and cut it down the size. But the overall quality and comfort factor for wearing it is... well, okay. It does the job, feels just sturdy enough, but doesn't really amaze me. 
I kind of also blame Pagani Design as I'm used to getting freebie NATOs from them, which are amazing. But you can be assured that the 20mm lug width will accommodate a whole range of straps, and the dial for the most part pairs well with a wide variety of colours too. On a similar note, the watch doesn't come with any spring bar tool remover, so unless you bought one already or have a leftover tool from a previous watch purchase, you're stuck with NATO straps until you get those spring bars out. Not a big deal, but something to bear in mind. Probably the biggest mixed feeling I have is with the name of this watch, Mysterious Code. Some people won't care, some people will think it's the bee's knees, and others will cringe at it, and I fall into the latter of these camps. It's a brand name I just cannot take seriously, and if I'm being honest, if the name was on the watch dial, I wouldn't have bought it. I feel it would just transform it from a Fliega watch to a kid's toy, but thankfully the name only appears on the back of the watch, so it can be our secret and a mystery to others. The doubt I mentioned earlier relates back to that case. It's advertised as aluminium, but the only thing that convinces me that this is a case back. The rest of the case appearance and its polish makes me think it's actually stainless steel. But given its light weight and the fact I have no way of testing if it's steel or not, I'll give the vendors the benefit of a doubt. And that case also leads me into the negatives. The polish is well done on the MC, but if you're planning to use it for more vigorous activities, it'll get dull and scratched quite easily. The crown operation is a mostly positive experience, but I have noticed that when it's unscrewed there's a lot of play and wobble, which makes me a little more cautious when operating it. But for what it's worth, unless you're changing time zones, you'll only need to operate it when the battery dies. The use of skill on eyes hands make for some visual appeal on that dial, but the trade-off is legibility. The minute and seconds hand is still fairly easy to read, but that hour hand, especially in low light conditions, can take some time to locate on the dial, especially if the minute hand overlaps it. If it were me, I'd probably just go with black filled hands, as they stand out a bit more on the dial, especially with that loom. The issue with legibility also extends to the crystal. There's either very little or no any reflective treatment on it, so bright lights on the right angles make it difficult to read at times and almost impossible to take decent video shots. So name and nitpicks aside, the MC is still a great Flieger watch. In fact, I'd confidently say it's better than the Aristo Flieger I owned several years ago, and that was almost triple the price of the MC and didn't have its impressive specs either. But if you're looking to buy a Flieger that's got brand cachet and the better quality, finish and specs, but still can't make a decision, I'd encourage you to check out the MC, not just as a means to fill that Flieger craving, but also to see if it's the right style for you, and to get an idea of what the benchmark can and should be. If you have or have previously owned this Mysterious Code Flieger, or any Mysterious Code watch for that matter, I'd be interested to hear thoughts about it. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?